Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues. I'm Wen Li, Director of the Department of External Relations of IOM. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the launch of a Migration Governance Indicators Data and GCM, a baseline report. This report provides a baseline assessment of the implementation of GCM. Through analyzing the MGI data collected in more than 80 countries that are relevant for GCM objectives, as the first International Migration Review Forum is just around the corner, it's our hope that this report can contribute to the discussion at IMRF and GCM implementation in the next phase. I'm pleased to invite IOM Director General, Mr. Vitorino, to make some opening remarks. DG, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Van. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the launch of this report. As Ven has just mentioned to you, for more than six years, the migration governance indicators has been helping governments in assessing the comprehensiveness of their migration policies, allowing them to adapt to what is clearly an ever-changing migratory landscape. The migration governance indicators became a critical tool to support governments in order to strengthen their migration governance structure, which can in turn empower migrants to contribute fully to their communities, both of origin and of destination. With the, the participation of more than 90 national governments and 50 local authorities, I sincerely think that the Migration Governance Indicators is now widely known as a program that can inform policy change around the world. Last year, I was particularly pleased to see that a number of countries included migrants in their COVID response, which was influenced by the Migration Governance Indicators process. I am also happy today to note that several countries have used the migration governance indicators as a basis to build their global compact implementation plans and to report on the progress they have made in reaching their global compact commitments. But one fundamental benefit of this project that has not received enough attention so far is the enormous amount of data on migration policy it can generate, and most importantly, that can be used to understand patterns of migration, trends of evolution of migration, common challenges, and to inform policy and decision-making processes. Indeed, working closely with governments over the years, has allowed us to gather more than 15,000 data points, 15,000 data points on migration policies around the world, making the migration governance indicators the biggest database on migration governance worldwide. For the first time this year, IOM was in a position to analyze this information and publish some of the key findings emanating from the work that we have conducted in 84 countries. The publication that we are launching today sets a baseline for what could be the first quadriennial MGI data contribution to each international migration review forum, also supporting the regional reviews of the Global Compact on Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration. May I recall that the Secretary General in his uh, report to the International Migration Review Forum recommends and encourages countries to develop benchmarks and mechanisms to measure progress on their commitments in the implementation of the Global Compact. Therefore, it is my hope that the migration governance indicators data continue to inform an increasing number of voluntary Global Compact reviews 
and national implementation plans. As part of the International Migration Review Forum pledging initiative, we, from our side, IOM, we aim to roll out the MGI program in two thirds of UN member states and in more than 100 local authorities by 2026, before the next International Migration Review Forum. I hope that the report we are launching today will inspire countries that have participated in the migration governance indicators process to use this exercise to its full potential and also encourage others to join the process. You will all be most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, DG, for uh, providing an overview of the role that uh, MGI has played in supporting government's uh, pol uh, migration policy making, including COVID response, as well as the uh, implement implementation of GCM. I'm now pleased to uh, hand over the floor to Ms. Julieta Valas Noyes, Assistant Secretary, Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration, U.S. Department of State. We are very grateful for PRM's generous support for this initiative since 2017. Along with other donors, PRM have made it possible to bring this pilot project developed in the context of SDGs in 2015 to make it grow into a flagship global program that can now be instrumental for the implementation, follow-up and review of the GCM. Madam Assistant Secretary, you have the floor. Thank you, Wen, and thank you, Director General Vitorino and IOM for bringing us together today to speak about the migration governance indicators. It's an exciting time with the first International Migration Review Forum coming up in less than two weeks. I'm happy to join you to say a few words in support of the migration governance indicators. The Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration at the US Department of State leads US coordination of international migration related diplomacy and capacity building worldwide. We work with governments to aid vulnerable migrants and promote policies and procedures for well-managed, safe, and humane migration. For the last five years, PRM has supported the implementation of the Migration Governance Indicators, helping IOM to partner with governments to assess their migration management frameworks and to identify good practices and areas of potential growth. PRM is proud to have contributed to developing migration governance indicators in more than 90 countries and with 50 local authorities. This has helped countries all over the world, such as Albania, Cambodia, Djibouti, Iraq, Moldova, and Thailand, to identify gaps and to develop Global Compact on Migration national implementation plans. Through this program, we are pleased that several other countries, including Sierra Leone, Uruguay, Guatemala, and Tajikistan, have used the results to implement concrete policy changes that contribute to, to achieving specific global compact on migration objectives. MGI insights have been particularly useful to help inform PRM's programming, especially in our regional uh, migration capacity building programs, which focus on improving migration governance capacities in more than 50 countries. It allows us to base our strategic interventions on concrete evidence and needs and to track progress of impacts over time. Today, we are so pleased to participate in the launch of IOM's publication, the Migration Governance Indicator and Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration, your baseline report. International migration is a transnational phenomenon, and no state can address it alone. Therefore, international cooperation among states between international and multilateral organizations and civic society is critical to safe, orderly, and humane migration. <coughs> This report will help to inform the vision of the Global Compact on Migration and Managing Migration, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I get emotional talking about these things. <laughs> anyway, 
I'm very much looking forward to attending the International Migration Review Forum in New York and to continuing our excellent work together with IOM on the migration governance indicators in the future. Sorry for the coughing, but again, I get emotional on this topic. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much for uh, your longstanding support to I, I, uh, MGI, but also for upholding the uh, principle of international cooperation on migration. We look forward to continue uh, our close collaboration with PRM in, uh, in this regard. And today we are joined by a panel of distinguished representatives of governments that have participated in the IMGI program to share their experience and perspective. I'm now handing over to my colleague, David, program manager of MGI to moderate the discussion. Thank you very much, Wen, uh, and thank you very, oops. Now, okay, thank you very much, Wen, and thank you very much to all participants. Um, we will now go to the second part of this program, uh, which is dedicated to presenting the findings of this report, the report on MGI and uh, GCM that sets a baseline in this regard. Uh, I will now give the floor to uh, the director of the Global Migration Data Analysis Center in Berlin, uh, Mr. Frank Lesko. Mr. Director, you have the floor. Thank you so much, David, and uh, hello to everyone. Um, let me start off by saying that we are delighted to be able to release today a very long and detailed report, which is based on the analysis of data that we have collected from 84 countries uh, over the period 2016 to 2021. And as our Director General mentioned uh, earlier, I think uh, this is currently the largest uh, and most comprehensive database on, uh, on migration governance worldwide, even though at present it still only includes 84, uh, more recently 92 countries. Uh, let me start by thanking um, the MGI team for producing this report, in particular the lead authors, um, Roberto Roca, Adriana Vides, and Andrea Milan. And I'd like to start by giving you some background as to uh, regarding how the MGI started and how we developed it in relation to the GCM. Uh, could you show, show the next slide, please? Uh, so as, as many of you probably realize, uh, the, 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 M the Migration Governance Indicators Project actually started well before uh, the, the Global Compact on Migration. And it was originally designed to be a tool to help us monitor progress in relation to SDG Target 10.7, which basically encouraged all countries around the world to develop well-planned migration policies in order to facilitate safe and responsible migration and the mobility of people. And back in 2016, when we started thinking about that challenge, there, we realized that there wasn't much information available and no systematic set of uh, indicators that, uh, that could help us really um, track progress towards this SDG target. And so the Migration Governance Indicators project was developed and born, and a series of 94 indicators were developed in consultation with a range of different actors and stakeholders. And uh, later on, um, in 2018, we adapted the MGI indicators um, specifically in order to enable us to better um, uh, focus on tracking progress in, relating, in relation to the 23 objectives of the Global Compact on Safe and Orderly Migration. And um, as a result of that exercise, we are in a position today, I think, to at least provide ahead of the IMRF next week, uh, a comprehensive baseline assessment of exactly what kinds of migration frameworks tend to predominate in different countries, in different regions of the world. 
And what we've done in this very detailed report is we've looked at each of the 23 objectives of the GCM, and we've taken data from our database, our MGI database, and we've summarized that information in roughly two pages in order to make the document, in order that the document is not too unwieldy, and in order to present some of the key data and, and messages um, from, from this exercise in a user-friendly fashion. Um, so next, next uh, slide, please. So this report can be read in different ways. It provides um, a global picture of uh, what we know about migration governance in relation to the GCM objectives. It provides a regional perspective. Uh, you will see in the report some comparisons between results from different regions and within regions. And it also provides a national perspective. And much of this, much of the data is currently available in individual reports, which you can find on IOM's global migration data portal if you want to um, obtain the full details of these MGI exercises. The report also tries to not only look at each objective and the data that we have in relation to each objective um, individually, but it also tries to look at the whole set of objectives and the way that they interrelate with each other. For example, the first objective of the compact focuses on data, but other objectives deal with reducing or combating uh, trafficking. And in regards to the trafficking objective, you also have questions re relating to the availability of data on trafficking. So we've tried to develop a comprehensive approach in the report as such. Um, one caveat is that we have to keep in mind that this is essentially a report which looks at how comprehensive migration policies, governance frameworks, institutions um, uh, look, um, but we are not able at this stage to fully assess the impact of many different types of policies that would require a separate um, exercise and is a rather complicated challenge. Um, but within the framework and in the context of the IRMF, IMRF, we believe that the MGI provides a, an extremely important uh, baseline for discussions next week. And let me just say a word in the next slide about the MGI framework which is different from other data exercises because it is very much a voluntary and a consultative exercise. And in this respect, I think um, it is especially valuable when we come to the IMRF because the data that we are presenting has been validated by national authorities. These exercises are carried out in full consultation um, with national stakeholders. So there are no surprises here. And uh, we hope that we accurately reflect the realities on the ground in each country that has been um, surveyed. Um, so over now I'd like to present just a few highlights from the report to just give you a flavor of what, what you can find in this report when you open it up later today. Um, next slide, please. So what we can see, I think, in general is that if we look down all the objective, if we look through all the objectives uh, relating to the GCM, and we look at the data that we, we have available relating to migration governance, we see some areas where um, the situation is quite good and, and, we, and probably progress has been made in, in recent years. Uh, and other areas where there are still considerable challenges and gaps in information and much more needs to be done. And we've just pulled up a few examples in the next, next few slides. I'll just mention a couple of things. For example, from this first slide, um, whilst the majority of countries report that their national census includes a module on migration, Nearly one third of countries say that this isn't the case. And remember that the census is the key source of information in many countries about migration. And also we find that 
although we know that migration has different impacts on, on, on men and women and there and uh, there are very different trends affecting men and women it's often the case that countries uh, do not collect uh, data disaggregated by sex outside the census um, we have also collected data on uh, in relation to objective two um, you see um, despite the fact that there's so much focus on drivers of migration or root causes of migration, that two thirds of MGI countries uh, reported that they lack a, stra a strategy with, res with respect to specific measures to assist migrants before, during, and post-crisis in a country. And then when it comes to information provision, objective three, we see that whilst many countries are um, tackling this issue, only 7% of the communication systems in many countries consider the specific vulnerabilities faced by migrants. Uh, next slide, please. Another key goal of the Global Compact on Migration is to promote more regular migration through regular pathways, and the MGI provides some information on, on this topic. Um, uh, in just over 53% of countries, for example, family reunification is possible for only certain categories of foreign residents. Uh, we also have data relating to objective six on recruitment and decent work. Uh, we see that only one third of countries have developed measures to promote the ethical recruitment of migrant workers, and only one third of countries report that they have developed mechanisms to promote protect the rights of their nationals working abroad. Um, there is also data relating to objective seven concerned with reducing various uh, 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 vulnerabilities faced by migrant populations. And here you see that less than half of countries have a contingency plan to manage large scale population movements in times of crisis. Uh, next slide, please. And then this last slide, I'm not going to go through all 23 objectives, but we've just picked out this uh, last slide, which I think highlights some areas where there is a need for um, more effort in the future. Um, the Global Compact places a great deal of emphasis on the words safe migration, and yet, and uh, objective eight of the compact uh, calls on countries to do more to promote safe and orderly migration and to trace and identify missing migrants within their ter national territory. But we find that uh, the, by far the majority of countries lack systems to trace and identify missing migrants. And this is despite the fact that in recent years, the number of missing migrants around the world continues to increase and the number of people searching for information about their missing uh, family men members has continued to increase. So this is a major gap in migration governance currently. Another gap relates to trafficking, not so much the fact that countries don't have a strategy. Most countries report having a strategy against human trafficking, but countries are, uh, only a third of countries regularly publish data on their tra counter-trafficking activities. So sometimes there is a lack of transparency here in terms of what data is being collected and how it's being shared in regards to efforts to combat human trafficking. And then lastly, since we're still not out of the global pandemic, it's very interesting to look at uh, the question of access to services and particularly migrants' access to healthcare. And the MGI provides a number of indicators relating to this point, and it suggests that it, although many countries do offer equal access to nationals, um, regardless of their migration status, um, there are many more that there are just as many countries that still do not provide full access uh, to migrants to all health services, and there it, this is. Um, a particular concern given um, that um, we want to ensure that all that migrants are fully included in national vaccination plans, for example, um, uh, during the pandemic. 
So lastly, let me conclude now by saying a few words about the way forward. And I want to underline two key points. Um, we're kind of, we're somewhat at the halfway point with the MGI. We have so, something like 92 countries that have contributed to this exercise. We believe that number can increase much further in the future. And by increasing the number of countries participating in the MGI, we will be able to, uh, four years from now, provide even more detailed information about how countries are uh, uh, at, to what extent countries are attaining GCM objectives and targets. The other thing that is happening and the other ambition that we have is to ensure that more countries repeat this exercise so that it doesn't just become a one-off assessment, but they continue to use the MGI and to uh, regularly report on changes in migration governance. And we're pleased to be able to report that since 2020, already 18 new countries have decided to conduct second assessments. So as the MGI project um, evolves, we think that it will, will become an even more important uh, tool to provide insights into global migration governance in the future. And we hope that it will, the, the new report uh, will be widely read next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Frank, uh, for this presentation. And thanks, as you mentioned, to, to the team who put this together, especially uh, colleagues from the MGI team and, and GM DEC uh, who have worked very hard in making this happen. Mm. I would also want to, to thank the colleagues in the publication unit uh, from IOM, both in Geneva yeah. and in Manila that worked yeah. especially hard in the past few weeks to make sure we uh, can share this publication that you can find now in the chat. Uh, we will now pass to the third part of this uh, presentation, where we will hear from uh, various governments that have taken part in the MGI process over the past few years, some of which are participating as we speak. Um, we will start uh, with a representative from the government of Ireland, Madame Una Buckley, uh, Deputy Secretary General of the Department of Justice. Uh, Madame Bla uh, Buckley, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, David, and thanks very much uh, to Antonio and to all the team um, from IOM on what is an excellent report. I had a chance to have a glance through it this morning and it, it, there's a lot of interest in there for us as part of our journey on migration. Um, Ireland, I think, traditionally has been regarded more as an exporter of migrants than as an importer of migrants. And uh, so we, we certainly have had long-standing issues around engaging with our own diaspora. And I, I know that there was a very successful uh, global diaspora forum uh, led by my uh, colleagues in the Department of Foreign Affairs last month, which I think was uh, very well attended and a very useful uh, preliminary point before going into the discussions in New York uh, later this month. But actually Ireland has become an importer of migrants over the last, particularly the last 20 years. Um, and in fact, now nearly one in five of all persons living in the Republic were born elsewhere. So we, uh, we have had to learn how to become a multi multicultural society in very short order. Um, we signed up to the Global Compact, uh, of course, um, I'm very happy to do so, um, but in terms then of, of looking as to what changes were needed in our own practices, we found the, uh, when IOM suggested to us, and I, I should have a shout out here to our head of mission, Nalini, in, in, uh, in Dublin, who has been a, a superb support uh, to us, um, and uh, in particular in front of her uh, head of organization, I want to say how excellent she is and, and, uh, and how much we've come to rely on her. Um, it has used, helped us in the last few years and we have now faced into two very major crises in the last couple of years, uh, which the MGI uh, assessment has allowed us help, uh, helped us in that space. The first one of course has been in relation to COVID and how we dealt with um, the management of the pandemic in our migrant population. In particular, um, it helped us target uh, a lot of our work on vaccination into our migrant population where there might have been less 
you know, fewer accesses to mainstream uh, state media and things like that. So there would have been fewer fewer people accessing the normal channels that were used by by our health services to uh, to try and drive home the message about the need for and the importance of vaccination. And that was extremely helpful. And we worked very closely with our partners in in the health services on that. And most recently, of course, um, we have faced the issue of taking in a series, a, a very large number by Irish standards of refugees from the Ukrainian crisis. Um, and looking back over our return, our national return to on the MGI, I note that Ireland did not have a policy on response to a crisis movement of, of refugees. And um, so we're having at the moment to learn that rather on the hoof as to how one deals with thousands of people coming into your country in the space of weeks, as opposed to what we're more normally used to, which is thousands of people arriving over the course of a year or, or whatever. Um, and that has been a very uh, se severe learning for us. And we, we will be taking that forward, I think, from now on, that this is a risk that we have to plan for and we have to manage in the best way that we can. Um, and I think that the uh, MGI standards and parameters will help us do that. Um, we're certainly as well looking, at, looking forward to the discussions uh, in, in the UN in a few weeks time. Um, we have areas of challenge ourselves that the uh, global indicators have allowed us to identify. Um, one of the areas of, which is a very great focus for us at the moment and where we're partnering with IOM is around anti-trafficking of people, which is a real scourge and uh, we know takes place in this country and we know that we need to continue to constantly up our efforts to, to tackle that. Um, IOM are helping us with that. They're working with us on advertising campaigns and working around that. It, to, to try and get the knowledge out both among Irish people that the, the person painting their nails or washing their car might be a trafficking victim. Um, uh, that it isn't just into, if you like, the seedier sides and the seedier professions that that, that works. Um, and then se secondly, we've, we've, we're looking at this very strongly, obviously in the context of the very great concern about trafficking issues in the case of, of this mass movement of Ukrainians and Ukrainian women and children who are highly vulnerable. Um, so we're working with uh, IOM um, who, have, who are working with us and have provided us with interpreters, Ukrainian interpreters who are working with us on the ground. And one of the issues that we're strongly looking into is around uh, the human trafficking aspects of that. And, and how that how that how we can try and uh, identify potential victims and make sure that we can have conversations with them where they're safe they're not in the cost in in the control of a potential trafficker um, and that really is is something that we're we're very conscious of and we we are working very strongly on trying to uh, to deal with in the context of this for Ireland unprecedented situation having IOM, standing beside us with all of their knowledge and all of their background uh, working on that has been extremely uh, uh, important for us and something that we're, 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 um, we're very happy to have uh, in the circumstances. That, David, that's, that's, I, that's my prepared remarks. If, if, if there's anything further that you want me to cover, I'm very happy to do so. No, thank you very much. Uh, that, that was actually very insightful and, and we're looking forward to, to continuing the process as we are working uh, with, with Dublin uh, this year. Uh, so thank you very much for, for the remarks. Uh, we will now pass to the second speaker uh, from the government of Bahrain, uh, Madame Shahreen al Saati, Director of Grievances and Protection of the Labour Market uh, Regula Regulatory Authority. Uh, Madame al Saati, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, David. Um, um, first of all, good evening from Bahrain. Uh, sorry for not being able to, uh, on the video, I have a, a poor network, but uh, I hope my voice is clear. It is, we, we hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, distinguished guests, Director General, Madam Assistant Secretary diplomatic representatives of governments from around the world, colleagues. It is my pleasure to join you today in the event to launch the report on MGI. As we approach the IMRF in just two weeks, the meeting today is a timely opportunity 
to reflect on the tools available to measure progress towards the implementation of the GCM. It is also an opportunity to reflect on the important role of the migration governance indicators, data and its contribution to this on a national level. I will highlight some of the ways in which the government of Bahrain is utilizing the MGI in our work on the GCM, as well as the broader sustainable development uh, goals framework. The government of Bahrain sees the IMRF in New York as a pivotal moment, moment to take stock of the implementation of the GCM and its 23 objectives for the first time since their adoption, since their adoption in 2018. Bahrain voted in favor of the GCM, General Assembly Resolution, and we submitted our first GCM voluntarily national report in 2020 for the regional review in the Arab region. We recognize the importance of data collection for the development of evidence-based policies in the area of migration. Bahrain, a Bahrain's extensive categorized database has contributed to the redevelopment of policies by relying on data collected through the kingdom's population registry and the expat management system. This is also linked to the NRM, the National Referral Mechanism for Victims of Trafficking in Persons. The NRM is used as a data analysis tool for the migration process and for casting trends in the crime of trafficking in persons. Bahrain also took part in the first of its kind regional meeting on strengthening evidence-based policy making on migration in the Gulf countries, which took place on the 29th of March, 2022. The meeting gathered participants from across the Gulf countries and was an opportunity to exchange good practices related to collection, sharing, and use of migration-related data, as well as outline some potential areas of future work on this. It is my pleasure also to share with the distinguished participants that Bahrain is taking part for the first time this year in the MGI. The overall objective of the MGI is to help strengthen migration governance based on our country's national priorities. The MGI's focus on, role and on rules and regulations, policies, and institutions, as well as operational structures and coordinating mechanism as related to international migration and migrants is an important tool to and process for us. We are currently in the process of complying responses to a wide range of specific questions related to the system for migration governance. These are being validated by all relevant government ministries and authorities to ensure accuracy and constancy of data provided as well as a whole of government approach. We are also using the MGI process to inform our, pre our prefer preparation for the IMRF and provide an update on the GCM voluntarily national report. Furthermore, broadly, the MGI falls directly under the priorities identified in strategic and sustainable development cooperation framework 2021-2022 signed between the government of Bahrain and the United Nations. As such, it is linked to the cooperation towards the implementation of the SDGs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for the invitation today and for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Director. And in fact, uh, I think some of the examples that you've mentioned make me think that uh, we, we've published a, a publication called Success, uh, Success Stories, MGI Success Stories in 2001. We are currently working on a similar publication on how governments have used or will use 
the MGR results towards concrete um, policy developments, towards the, the GCM, and I have no doubt that Bahrain um, and, in fact, um, Ireland will be in this in this new publication uh, in the months uh, to come. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of the developments that you've mentioned. Um, we will now turn to the third speaker. Um, as Frank mentioned, this publication that we're launching today mainly focuses on uh, governments, national governments that have participated in the exercise. That being said, since 2018, uh, 51 local authorities have also joined uh, this process, the MGI process. And in this regard, we wanted to make sure that we give the voice to one of those local authorities to share their experience with uh, the, the GCM. And in this regard, I have the pleasure to give the floor to Madame uh, Sofia Arce, who is uh, Director General of International Cooperation for uh, the city of Cuenca in Ecuador. Madame uh, Director General, you have the floor. Thank you, David, and thank you to the IOM for this space. As you have told before, I am going to talk about the experience uh, of a local government with the MGI. Well, I am from the municipality of Cuenca in Ecuador, Ecuador, Latin America. And this report has constituted for us a first global overview of the state of the national migration governance across the world. But it also has become a framework for us, the countries and also the cities in the assessment of uh, comprehensiveness of our migration policy as well um, a way that we can identify the gaps and the areas that could be stringent. Also, I believe it has been very important, all the information about good practices, because this is an opportunity to share with cities and also uh, between countries that are living similar challenge to the ones that we are living well, here in Cuenca. And uh, it is important also not only to learn about the legal framework for migration policies, but especially for us, it is important to learn and understand how these policies were implemented in different countries. For example, for us, um, when I was uh, reading last night the information of the MGIs from, for Cuenca, uh, the partnership between the private sector and the social partners uh, for, for promoting a safe and regular channel for migration is very important. So I believe that for local territories, our premise must be uh, learning by sharing sharing uh, how uh, these policies were implemented and well, to adapt any to the local necessities. Uh, since September, 2021, the IOM in Ecuador has been working with the municipality of Cuenca for the preparation of this migration governance profile of Cuenca. Uh, we have developed this with the support of several dependencies of the municipal government and um, we can say that with a population of 650,000 uh, inhabitants, that is the population in Cuenca, we have two kinds of migration. One migration that has come uh, 10 years ago, especially from Colombia, and now with the Venezuelan diaspora, we have incremented this um, migration to the city. Um, as I was told, told telling before prior to this event, I was reading the results of Cuenca MGI. And besides there is much that has been done to facilitate the social and economic inclusion of human mobility population, especially during these two last years of the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a lot of necessities that still needs to be um, implemented. And there are limited resources. Um, the ones who are in charge of uh, the cities or of the states know that the resources are limited. For that, it's so important for us uh, to continue the support of the international cooperation in order to uh, complement uh, the actions that the local authorities are developing in the countries. And also an um, important learning of this process has been the necessity to include the private sector in the development of these public policies to promote economic, economic inclusion. For us at Cuenca Municipality, the IGM are like a photography with a high resolution quality of, as, of our city state migration policy. So it can be very helpful to identify the gaps and areas that uh, could be astringent. 
also, uh, as I would like to, to point out today, is that Cuenca municipality uh, has a look to warranty that all migrants have the same access like nationals to the municipal services. One example of this is the Escuela Taller, that is a municipal space where the population can, can learn a job. And it has been especially important support that I, um, um, Ecuador has, has uh, given to us in order to stretch this space with the donation, the training of this population, and also to the ones who work in this municipal space. And uh, that will be uh, all for, for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Director General. I, I, I really liked uh, your quote of the MGI is, is a photography with high level resolution. I think we might uh, steal that uh, from now on and, and use it with other governments. Uh, thank you very much. I would also like to turn um, our audience attention to one of the messages that came in the chat uh, from a, a representative from the government of Gambia who unfortunately uh, had uh, technical issues with the microphone, but uh, I invite everyone to, to read uh, this intervention. In fact, the, the work that we have conducted in Gambia was particularly uh, interesting. Uh, once again, if we talk about success stories, I think this is one of the very good examples that we've had uh, in recent years. Um, so this will conclude uh, this part of the meeting. In fact, this will conclude this meeting. I invite participants to continue writing in the chat if you have questions, if you have uh, comments on the report or more generally uh, on the MGI. And on that note, I will give uh, the floor back to uh, Madam uh, Wen Li, Director of uh, the Department for, uh, for External Relations uh, for your concluding remarks. Madam Director, you have the floor. Thank you, David. I want to thank all participants uh, for joining today's uh, launch event. And my special thanks uh, go to the panelists for your valuable experience and uh, insightful views that inspire us to continue to work on MGI. Most of all, I would like to thank all the governments at national and local levels that have participated in this uh, MGI program. Strengthening migration governance is not an easy task and engaging in policy change takes courage. The first step to do this is to take a hard look at the policies, the laws and structures that, uh, that we have in place and see whether they are still adequate for the current migra migratory situation. This is what the IMGI offers. And by participating in this process, you have taken a courageous first step toward the policy changes needed to achieve the objectives of GCM. As DG mentioned, um, that we hope MGI can be used more widely as a tool to support migration policy making in line with GCM objectives. And we will work to roll out this program to two thirds of UN membership and more than 100 local authorities by 2026. We count on close collaboration with all our partners to achieve this goal. And now that uh, member states are considering developing a limited uh, set of indicators to support and monitor the implementation of GCM, we stand by to contribute our experience uh, in the process of our MGI to this exercise, should it be a great poem by member states. And finally, I, I just want to remind that uh, this report is now available online on IOM publication platform. Uh, for those of you who have questions on the report that was presented today, or more generally on MGI, you're welcome to contact the MGI team. We look forward to engaging more with you on this initiative and continue supporting you in the implementation, follow-up, and review of GCM. Thank you very much. So thank you very much to, to all the participants, all the speakers, um, and um, we hope to be in touch very soon on this matter. Thank you very much.